one of the people's favorite segments. And me doing this is called ANTM Roll Call, Top Model Roll Call, where I name everyone who was on your cycle, both the cast as well as the other on-screen talent. And you're going to tell me the first thing that comes to your brain when I say their name. Are you ready? Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, oh the first name is Samantha. Samantha Blonde. Oh, no, Samantha. That was the roommate that got picked out after me. Love her. From Alabama, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got some things to say, but not on live. <laughs> what you got to say? What? No, you can't do that. You can't. Yeah. No. I mean, I had to share a room with her, so I learned some things. But, child. We love us some Samantha. She's innocent. Um, why did she get kicked off so early? Mm, I have no idea, but why did I or why did Samantha? No, why did she? No, we will get to you after, after, after we move all these other people out the way. I wouldn't know because I left before her. Everyone's going to be so upset with you with this child and you can't tell us. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to push it. Moving on uh, to Cassandra. Cassa oh, my God, Cassandra. I loved her so much. Mm -hmm. um, very church girl, very soft-spoken, very slim, ate apples and bananas all day long. Like, really wanted to be a model. Vaseline the skin before going to sleep. Amazing girl, but she was really dedicated to being a model. Yeah. I'm not that girl. I eat. What you be eating? Everything. I'm Haitian, so you know I eat. <laughs> Come on, sa passe. Sa passe, du all of that good stuff. Yeah! One of my favorite teachers um, from high school, shout out to Miss Marie Duperval, who is now the vice president. You know that's a Haitian last name, Duperval. <laughs> Whatever is a Haitian last name. Um, but she is the vice president of my high school down in Fort Lauderdale, um, Boyd H. Anderson High School, where I was the SGA president and homecoming king. Just want to throw that out there, as well as an IB student. Anyways, oh. she was she was my IB. Um, no, she was my SGA advisor, and she was so funny. Like she was like our mom. And anytime I would do something alarming or like you know you know out of pocket, she'd be like, "Kisa, Kisa." Wait, what's your nationality? As far as I know, I'm Black American. Okay, yes. Tell tell the people what Kisa means. Kisa means what? <laughs> she's like, Kisa? Kisa? What? Yeah. What? <laughs> Always be so funny. Shout out to Ms. Duperval. I know she's watching. Love you, girl. Always. Um, next on the list is Felicia Provost. Felicia. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She looked like Tyra. Baby Tyra. That's what we used to call her. Beautiful girl. Beautiful. Very extreme. Where is she? I'm a little ratchet, but beautiful girl. She was ratchet? A little bit. Blonde hair. Mm -hmm. Um, next on the list is Diana. Oh, she was they they labeled her as the um overweight girl. Not overweight. Oh God, what am I saying? <laughs> the overweight girl. The plus size model. There we go. Size. No, she was small. She was small. They're crazy. One thing about America's Next Top Model, it, and I looking back, if you're not confident at a young age, do not join that show. You need to be super confident. Mm -hmm. Have super thick skin. Um, next on the list is Sarah. Sarah Vaughn. Mm -hmm. Sarah Vaughn had the pixie short hair. She was mm -hmm. giving. Um, she was super cute. She looked mm -hmm. like a. Um, next on the list is Whitney. Whitney, black girl. She was wearing heavy makeup back then. Um, Whitney was cute. Whitney was cool. Yeah, nothing, no highlights. Okay. Um, plus size as well. Yeah, she was considered a plus size model. First time in top model history, two plus size girls. How to beat her face at such a young age. Yeah. Um, I love, I love how just like innocent you are. Like, it's just so, you're saying like these wonderful sound bites, but it's just, I know you have no ill intentions at all, but it's just so amazing to experience. That's what I remember about them. <laughs> I can tell. I love it. Um, next on the list is JL. Oh, 
I think JL passed away. Yeah, she did pass away of cancer, I believe. Loved her. Oh my God. That was my soul sister. Really? She's spirited. Don't give a fuck. Don't give a shit. She's like that girl. I guess she was on drugs. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But um, she was just so free spirited. Yeah. Um, and we've spoken about it you know on you know over here and it's of course on the internet for those of you who want to see and do your own homework but she did have an experience um but that was not the end of her experience she did get herself back on the right track and she cleaned herself up was leading a normal life and unfortunately i believe um sometimes my memory be messing with me but i'm i, I think it was cancer breast cancer yeah. that um that yeah. she eventually um she came to so an you know that was somebody that stood out to me she was just amazing she um welcomed me with open arms and like i said i think she was my spirit animal like i love her what's um a fun story about her that you remember oh god um i don't even remember it was so long ago but i think when i had showed my titties she was right there like telling me a story about her family but she's just so cool. So mm -hmm. cool. down to earth girl. Next on the list is Brittany. Oh God, I think that's who I, I um who was Brittany? What does she look like? Brittany was um skinny, kind of palish. Hair. Short hair. Mm -hmm. Reddish kind of color hair. Reddish, yep. All right, Brittany was very blah. Blah for Brittany. <laughs> okay. I love the honesty. I don't, I don't recall. She was very country, if I can recall. And me and her didn't connect like that. Did you guys have any run-ins? No. It's just Brittany. That was, she was there. Okay. Um, next on the list is Dion. Hula Hey Brown. Black sister. Um, let me, <laughs> Dion was cool. Dion was very down to earth. Very mature, I remember. Mm -hmm. Super mature for her age. Um, I think she had contacts in at the time. Oh. If I'm not mistaken, she wore contacts, yeah. But very mature for her age. Next on the list is Renee Alway. Oh my God, refresh my memory, Renee. Renee was blonde girl, had a baby. She was kind of mean um, in the beginning, kind of. Renee was such a mean girl. Renee, oh my God, I everyone loved me. I love everyone, and I stayed out of trouble. But Renee was getting into it with everyone. Mm -hmm. what's, up, what's up with Renee? <laughs> you don't know what happened to Renee? Oh. Okay. Um, just as information, it's not me being shady. She asked me, so I'm gonna tell her. So, child, Renee tried to model. Um, after the show, couldn't really get into it. Um, eventually, led a life of drugs and crime. Girl, she robbed. She was out in California, for what I can remember. No. Um, she robbed somebody. I think it was a gun involved or something like that. She went to jail. She got out, and now she's back in. So we gonna pray that Mama. I don't know what she's in for or what she's doing, but we gonna pray Mama gets out. To be with her while she's in jail, because I think you could do that. Baby, I don't want to go through all them ropes. That's too much. I don't want to. I, I don't even know what that kind of clearance look like. Okay, no, let her wait. She can wait. I can wait. Delvey. It's giving Anna Delvey. It's what? It's giving Anna Delvey. Have you seen that show? On uh, Netflix? Yes. Isn't, isn't Anna Delvey when she was like this Russian, no, like this European girl who was scamming? No, I don't think Renee was doing like that. I think I think Renee was knucking if you bucking. Like, bitch, come outside, click, clack, gang, gang. Like, I think it was that type of rodeo. It gives you a taste of luxury, the luxurious lifestyle. Because let's not forget, they take you to the to LA, put you in nice hotels. They they give you a taste of um being up in the hills, partying with the. We met so many people. I met Fifty Cent, um, T and Tamara Mary. We met so Nia Long. I think was there. We meet so many celebrities. Jermaine Dupri, um, so many celebrities, and then they just take it away from you. You, you're you referring to that part. But after you showed me all of this? Yeah, but I mean, you know, you know, it's something you got to work for, you know, you know. And I don't want to, this me, me saying that isn't critiquing her journey because I don't know the lady. I don't know what she went through or <clears throat> what the hell is going on in my throat? Tyra, I'll bind you, bitch. Get the fuck out of my... 
Girl, ever since I've been talking about this, something has just been like choking me. Tyra, get away. Tyra, get out my throat, bitch. Tyra's innocent, guys. What'd you say? Tyra's innocent. Ooh, okay, we're gonna get to Tyra. Um, <laughs> the party that you're referring to, you're referring to the party that you guys went to, like right before you guys went into the house, right? Were you there after you got eliminated? Like I know after they they were still teasing me, teasing me. Did you participate in any other photo shoots? Um, I did the first photo shoot. Um, yeah, I did the first one with the fur, and that was about it. The main photo shoot, yeah. But you never participated in any other photo shoots after the first one. But are you saying? one and only main photo shoot and they were like this you're trash so <laughs> well, are you saying that they kept you around as a decoy well after they kick you off they don't just send you back home they keep you in LA what mm -hmm. behind the scenes they don't send you back home um they keep you in LA and I was experiencing certain things that the girls that were still on the show was experiencing I was still experiencing it like what like a fuck it was a tease Going to the um the party in LA, watching them do runway shows. Yeah, like you kicked me off, send me home. Nope. I had to stick around and actually go to certain places where the girls were still doing activities and doing certain things. Yeah. Did you see when JL got pushed in the pool? No, I didn't. I think I no, I didn't. I don't remember if I did see it. Oh. It was just a bunch of young girls just like having so much fun. Like, oh my God, we're staying in this big ass house. Oh my God, you know, we, we made it on the show. It was just a lot for a bunch of 20 year olds to, you know, entail. Oh, we spoke about her earlier, um, but is there anything additional you would like to add to Natasha? Oh, Natasha. I mean, she barely spoke good English. But she was a sweet girl. I don't want anyone to think that she was, you know, some type of terrible person. She was a very sweet girl. I think me and Natasha connected very early on during, mm -hmm. the and she was just a sweet girl. And like I said before, it's a television show where producers are telling you you need to stand out. So if anyone has like an image or a personality that they're portraying on the show, it's because we had no choice mm -hmm. but to show something to keep us on the show. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, that's a good point, you know, to keep yeah. to keep in the front of the brain. So uh, I would tell you, sit in silence, and they would say, when the cameras are going on, girls, we need to see it. Girls, stand out. Girl, they reiterated that all the time. What's gonna make you stand out? Next on the list is the winner of Cycle 8, Jocelyn. Oh, Jocelyn, I love her. <laughs> Anything else you want to add? Jocelyn won. Um, I don't know if I don't want to say she didn't deserve it. I don't know her journey, but I what I do know is that she was on the previous cycle, didn't make it to the house, but came back to audition and made it to my house, the one that I was in. <laughs> Not my house, obviously. No, I love it. I love it. <laughs> um has anyone ever told you that you look like um no don't do that she used she used she was on college hill but now she's a real housewife of dubai um my girl don't say my girl oh uh, milan but she got what's her other name um uh, who is it lisa milan? lisa lisa milan you you look like lisa can I tell you, me and my sister, we're like obsessed with that bitch. Obsessed. Lisa, if you see this, we're obsessed with you, girl. Obsessed. Keep doing your thing. We love you. I Literally, my sister will see her picture and be like, oh my God, Lisa's trying to be like me. Like, that's how much we love Lisa. I met her backstage at BravoCon last year, and she is... Mama, yes. Yeah, mama was so pulled. I love her so much. Yeah, I could I could just smell the money. Like I could just Oh, but let's not forget how sweet and classy she is. Very classy. Very classy. I live for Lisa. Um, uh, moving on to some more folks. What are your thoughts on Jay Manuel? 
Oh, J. Manuel. Um, he's super cute. Mm-hmm. All you get from him is like, I look good. His personality is um very nice. He was a very nice person. He's nicer than Mr. J. But um, he also like I listen. No, to- no, no, no. That's what we talking about, Mr. J. Oh, we talking about Mr. J. Yeah, the you guys is photo shoot photo shoot director. Oh, Mr. J. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm confused. Mr. J was the one with the pixie cut. Oh, J. Manuel. Yeah. He had a wife because he was so handsome. No, J. Manuel ain't got no. J. Mr. J and there's Mrs. J. Mrs. J was the runway diva coach who sat on the panel. Mr. Right. J was the other guy right. who was at the photo shoot. Yes, he's very handsome. He didn't have no wife, baby, believe me. No, but Nigel, I'm talking about Nigel. I'm sorry. <laughs> he had a wife. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, let's start with Mr. J. Okay. <laughs> So Mr. J was the one that, you know, he always was beat, beat to the gods, super cute. He was friendly. He was super nice. I have nothing negative to say about him. He was a very nice guy. Yeah. But always was snatched, face snatched. I think he got a nose job at the time. Yeah, that was years ago. He was been on to the nose jobs. Um, Face beat to the gods. Hair was always in place. But he was a super nice guy. Um, do you remember Sutan? Is that the hairstylist? Makeup artist? Yes, with the long black hair, but it was his real hair. Mm-hmm. He was a, he was beautiful, but he was very, he was a diva. Was he now? Tell us more. Well, I, I think he did hair and he had, you know, people working with him, but he was like the head, the head um, stylist. From what I recall, it's like, you know, being a black girl with natural hair at the time. I just remember before I did my first photo shoot, I just remember it was like a whole thing. Like, how are we going to do her hair? Or like her hair is not. I just felt so insecure at that time because I just feel like they didn't know what to do with my natural hair. I had a whole afro Mm -hmm. and it was like my hair was giving them problems because it wasn't pinned straight. Mm. And I could just feel it from their energy. Mm-hmm. And I'm just a model. I'm there to just shut up, sit down, and, and let them work on what they're working on. But I remember it being a topic like, what do we do with her? Or what do we do with this type of hair? And that made me feel like, it made me sink into like my shell. Like, all right. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, wow. Um, Next on I'm the list. When I went on Afro. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. And did you know that he um he later was a contestant on on Drag Race, and 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 won. Good for him. He's like a Drag Race icon, like. Really. Mm-hmm. When I saw him, I was like, "Oh my God, he's beautiful! Mm-hmm. Long, beautiful jet black hair. Face was just snatched. He was gorgeous." Yeah. Um. Next on the list is Twiggy. You don't remember the only white woman that was on the panel. She sat on the far right and she had a British accent. Oh my God, Twiggy, Twiggy, Twiggy. Twiggy was just Twiggy. (laughs) (laughs) Twiggy was just there. I don't remember her personality, quite frankly. (laughs) Next on the list is Jay Alexander, Miss Jay. Oh, Miss J was just, oh my God, vicious, 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 vicious. How vicious was she? Vicious, like, you don't know how to walk. You're not doing it right. That's not the walk. I'm that girl. I'm that B-I-T-C-H, and you guys got to walk better than that. Yeah. Very vicious. From you what could, I saw. You couldn't take it. But it was funny. It, was, it wasn't vicious like mean. It was very funny. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> this is so much fun. 
extra AF. Oh my god. Oh. Uh, four heels all the time. Mm-hmm. Okay. What? Advocate clothing at the panel. Just super extra. What do you remember about Nigel Barker? Oh my god, super like I'm here to work. Super like he has some type of accent. Oh my god, I can't even recall. British. British, right. English. Right, British, like some type of accent and very like girls, I'm here to work and like, you know, very stoic and just here to do his job. I think everyone was there to collect a check if you ask me. I would hope so. Nobody was over there volunteering. Right. I think they were just there like, oh, you want me to play this character? This is who I'm going to be. Um, and last but not least, anything else you want to add to Tyra? I know you said earlier that Tyra is innocent. What do you mean by that? So I do see a lot of people blame Tyra all the time. Like, oh, Tyra this, Tyra that. But I, when I first met Tyra, I just got the energy from her. Like, I'm here to work too, bitch. Like, I'm here to collect the check too. So I feel like, yes, this is, you know, ANTM, Tyra Banks produced it and stuff. But let's not forget... Um, I think Ken, we met the actual producer, Ken, Ken Ma. Ma. Uh-huh. Yeah. We were in the office with him, and it's kind of like, okay, Ty was the face of the show, but we're not about to just blame her for everything. I think her 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 head of, um, you know, someone above her was Ken Mock. You know, when it came down to business, that's who was talking to us. Hey, you're not supposed to tell anyone that you're going to be on the show. Hey, you can get sued if you tell anyone you're going to be on the show. Hey, you can't have any communication with anyone about the show. So Ken Mock was who came out and told us the, you know, the real deal, the raw, you know, information about the legal actions and stuff like that concerning the show. So I feel like everyone like throws stones at Tyra and I feel like Sis was here to collect the check. The same way we were there to, you know, work and do what we had to do. How do you feel about the production company and people like Kim Mock who ran the show? Um, I do feel like they could have been a little bit more, I don't want to say maybe sensitive towards the girls because we were young women. Pulling, the, pulling us out of our, you know, hometowns. A lot of us came from small hometowns. Alabama, you know, a lot of us were super young, 19, 20 to me, you're still a kid. You still don't know what this world is. And they just kind of didn't protect us as much as they could or explain to us what we're getting ourselves into. It's as an adult, I could look back and say, hey, you know, if if I was doing this again, I would have told my, you know, someone like, okay, you're young. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you're millions of people you know watch what you say you know i did feel like they used us as puppets cause wow yeah you you take a group of young women and you tell them hey when the cameras are off you cannot speak when the cameras go on that's your chance to say what you have to say we're puppets at this point you take our phones away you take our human connections away we can't call our parents we can't call our family members. You kick if we get kicked off the show, we get locked in like a, a a hotel room in LA. It's just a lot for a young woman to experience. Thank you for that. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, how do you look back on that? Like, cause you know, there's a lot of discussions now from a lot of girls that are kind of bitter from it and of course there are a lot of girls who are indifferent and a lot of girls who don't share that same experience. Are you bitter by that jaded in any way how do you reconcile it i'm very optimistic and i would never be bitter for it like i said it was a learning experience for me i would never be bitter about it you know mm -hmm. um you learn from things even bad experiences as an adult i learned from bad experiences and i become better from it yeah. i use the the negativity to fuel me even when i when i first got kicked off we were supposed to do all these interviews even um you know like um, the news reporters, they would, they, they lined up so many interviews for us. And I remember saying to one of the news reporters, she was like, how do you feel about leaving the show? Blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, well, this is not the end of me. You know, I'm going to become, uh, I think I said, I want to open up a restaurant. It was a stepping stone. 
it wasn't yeah. that feel use that negativity you leaving the show you being kicked off the show as fuel 